So I was at <clears throat> Atlanta Tech Village yesterday and I was wearing a MAGA hat inside like in the community center. I just got it like not even four days ago. I leave my table, I'm like, go, I'm walking with someone to like talk to them. And then I come back and all, my stuff is still there. My laptop, my, my backpack, all that stuff is still there. It's like a pretty, pretty populated place, you know? But the, the hat was gone, the MAGA hat was gone. I'm like sitting at this, at the table next to the glass in like the front yard area. And then there's a the person like sitting on the couch right here on, to the left of me. And I'm like, I asked them, I come back and I asked them, maybe it was not the right, I didn't word it the right way. Maybe I shouldn't have assumed that somebody had taken it because I asked, I'm like, oh, did you see who took it? And he goes like, no, nah, I don't even know why someone would want that hat or something like that. He said something along those lines, like throwing in a little insult. And I'm like, okay, let's just stop and just reset, you know, just break the cycle one second of like, I hate you, you hate me, I hate you, you hate me. And we hate each other because the last person hated each, the, me or I, I hated you and chicken or the egg. It's like, let's just break the cycle for one second and just reevaluate, okay? No one ever asked me why I wear the hat. And I, I, I was thinking about that on the way home. And then I went to sleep, I woke up. And let me explain in a way where people on the left, everyone can understand. If you choose to have the patience and open-mindedness to understand, anyone can understand. But the people that don't like Trump, let me explain it in a way that appeals to your ideas. That shows you like, okay, we're actually on the same side here. Foundation statement. Income inequality is bad. I think people on the left agree with that, generally speaking, right? If I'm wrong, let me know. Income inequality is bad. Let's flail around and just think and just use our brain for one second, right? We're on the same side here. Let's just think, why is income inequality bad? Because money has become too powerful. Because it is too easy for people with lots of money to oppress and even enslave the people with no money. Because in, in a world where it means so much, money truly can buy happiness because it can buy freedom. And what's more, this is the this is like the part that people need to reconcile. And this is the part that I feel like a lot of people on the left are actually enraged about. It's looking like the system that is in place only allows for a select few people, a very small number of people to have enough money to consider themselves free. And no matter how much money's in the system, it will always be the case because of the way money is valued, because of the value structures of society that, yeah, everybody might be a millionaire one day, but when everyone's a millionaire, it won't mean anything. And now the people with a hundred million are now the rich ones. So I'm appealing to, to the left here, okay? To Democrats. Income inequality is a problem. And it, it, it's part of a, a medley of larger problems that are all in this inequality of living, inequality of happiness. People need things that bring that, that fill the void in them freedom is one of those things i don't just mean freedom as in like oh american patriotic way where people get disgusted at the idea of, of freedom because they just because it's just a word with a negative connotation now i mean freedom to like explore life freedom to like walk outside safely freedom to like to to get educated on the things you want to get educated on freedom to to start a family and, and pursue your dreams and, and any of these things cascades into all the others. My strategy, my philosophy has always been, here's how you solve the problem. Get everyone to chase their dreams. Stop putting so much value into money as a, as a metric of uh, someone's quality of life. Like stop overvaluing money so much and encourage people to chase their dreams. Encourage people to see that their dreams are the most valuable things in their lives. The, the value and fun and excitement and, and, and perceive, it's not even real, but the portrayed fun life of people who just have lots of money and power and influence and, and, and cars and girls and jewelry and all this stuff, it's, it's literally fake. But the appearance of it, being so valuable, being such a sought after life needs to be devalued. It needs to be understood as like, okay, this is actually not such a like great way to live. It doesn't bring you happiness, truly. If everyone chases their dreams, if everyone follows their calling, what they were put on this earth to do, instead of people just going into whatever is gonna make them the richest or the most famous or get them the most attention from, from this person, it's like, but they actually chase their like true deep calling. The industries and the slots where people have already taken that space and they're hoarding that space, they'll go somewhere else because their dream is not there. Like no one's true dream deep down, unless you're a psychopath. 
is to become like a billionaire. Like those people have no place on this earth genuinely. And if you think that, that your purpose is to like get rich, chances are you've just been brainwashed, honestly. But that allows n n for each person to recycle themselves into the things that they actually enjoy doing most. And, and that kind of system, like by definition, is the system where the most people can be happy, the, the most happy. And yeah, some people will be left behind, but that's a progress thing. That's like over time, the more and more people find the hierarchies that they want to be a part of and dive deep into them, the more it will open up other opportunities and, and, and free up spaces for people who actually want to get into those things to then do them. That's how you achieve a free society. You get rid of all the grifters, you get rid of all the monopolies, you get rid of all the people that are just holding on to a position of power in some industry, some patent, some level of control, some brand recognition, some whatever it might be that keeps them at the top of the game without actually like having a passion for what they're doing. You get rid of all that stuff. You get rid of all those people, all the people that want the destination and not the journey, all the people who don't care about the process, all the people who make music so that they can get rich rather than the people that want to get rich so they can make music and dedicate their lives to making music. You get rid of all the people that care about the destination and you put in all the people that care about the journey because everyone can find a journey to care about. And if you can't, you don't have much of a life, honestly. Like there's not, there's genuinely not much enjoyment to be gained in life outside of a grand journey. It's a very, very simple concept. I don't want to go too in depth. I know I'm repeating myself, but I just want to drill it, okay? Free society is one where people have the opportunity to chase their dreams, where it's not restricted. It's not filled with all these inauthentic, big people. Again, personal philosophy, it comes down to authenticity, but that's, I'm not here to talk about my personal philosophy. America used to be a more honest place. America used to be a place where if you had a dream, Martin Luther King, if you had a dream, you can make it happen. And that's not so much the case anymore. Like, let me, let me, that's really what made America great. That opportunity, no matter what you wanted to do, you could get into it and you can make something of it. That's what made America great. And I want to see that more of that again, make, America great again, MAGA. What's so complicated about it? I had this a conversation with this guy and um, this was a long time ago actually. And he's like, oh, America was only ever great for white people. And it's like, that's the first response to make America great again. You're automatically going in with the implication that if you were to make America great again, it would only include white people? Why would you not assume that I'm talking about America as a whole, the most diverse country in the world? I said, I never said make white America great again. How is the first assumption to just input, implant a word in there and just put white right there? Make exclusively white America great again. That's not what I wore ahead of. And again, it's like a chicken or the egg kind of thing because this might, this might sound like a bit of a reach, it might sound a bit complicated, but just try to stick with me. By automatically assuming that if someone says make America great again, that they're only referring to white people for some reason, isn't that kind of like an admission of guilt? Isn't that kind of like Im implying that maybe white people will pick up on, on some pattern that you, you don't wanna say out loud, but maybe it's like white people will exclude other people from a a greater America in the future. Isn't that kind of like an admission of like what made America lose its greatness was all the non-white people? It's like, same thing happens on the left where it's like, um, there was this example of like white girl in an elevator uh, with a purse and then a black guy walks in. The white girl starts clutching her purse and it's like, the black guy wasn't thinking of anything, but now he's like, Damn, now I want to steal, like, why would you even assume that, you know? So it's like, why are you assuming the worst? Why the hell should I treat you like you're some great, like you're some saint? I'm from an immigrant family. I see the way that a lot of these, a lot of these immigrants in my own family even have such little empathy for the system that feeds them. When they talk about like politics, when they talk about like border control and all that stuff, here's what they see in their minds. This is what goes on in their minds. They see America as having a lot of value. They see India as having very little value and very little opportunity. They want to take their people, bring them to America, siphon out all the value until they're on an equal level, and then they don't really have a plan from there. Then it's on to the next, then it's leech off the next, leech off the next, leech off the next. Constantly grifting, constantly moving from place to place, selling out, no soul. We literally changed our names. We changed our names multiple times. We're the Haqqani family, my last name is Ali. Three generations ago, 
We weren't even the Haqqani family. I come from a family of sellouts, of people that like gave no fucks about their soul and, and like their legacy. They were just like hunting for, for the most money, for the most money, just consuming, 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 always looking for more and more and more. Pure selfishness, no desire to create something greater in the world, you know? And it disgusts me. And I'm like, damn, bro, if I was white and I saw the way these people acted, because my family, it seems like they're just racist off rip. It seems like they hate people, hate white people off rip. <laughs> Even when white people did nothing to them, white people are, are giving us stuff. They created the system that we're benefiting from. We could have been stuck in India, but we're here doing well for ourselves because of the system that white people created. We did not go through the responsibility to create this system, yet we are reaping the benefits of it. And instead of having empathy for the hand that feeds us, we're going, nah, give me more, give me more. And trying to like paint ourselves out to be the victim and go like, oh yeah, they're the villain. They owe us more, you know? Indian Americans are literally the richest um, people in America by average family household income. Like dog, we're the privileged ones. I don't even wanna like, I, I don't wanna make it about color. He, this guy made it about color. Like off rip, he made it about color and that's, Typical sign of someone that's been brainwashed. If you want to make it about color, Europeans brought African slaves to the Americas and they freed them. The slaves that they didn't bring, their descendants live there now and they're still slaves. They're still born into slavery toiling away from childhood, working in the mines, African slaves and African slaves ma slave masters. Governments, corporations, crime lords, they are all filled to the brim with corruption. The, the great, 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 great grandchildren of the people that didn't get taken on those boats are still there, they're still slaves. You can say what you want about the, the resourcefulness and the resilience of the black community, especially during the civil rights movement, especially during that in the United States. But let's just be clear about one thing right from the start. Without the empathy that was displayed from white people to black people, that never would have happened. Straight up, that never that was a make or break for that situation. In the in the creation of the Underground Railroad, in the creation of in the education of slaves, it never would have happened without the empathy of white people. To to see past labels and colors and see other people as as human just like them, and actually have love for humanity as a whole. And then now these people are claiming. We're victims. We need this. We need, we need reparations. We... Shut the fuck up. Like things take time to get better. You going in and, and trying to make an enemy of them, you're pulling them back down into the system, into the cycle of hatred, this never ending cycle. It's like, if you do nothing, if you literally leave white people alone, the hatred in the system goes away. Like we saw that. We, we literally saw an example of that. In American history, white people had every opportunity and, and not much of a reason to, honestly, like they, they had every opportunity to deny black people their freedom, but they chose empathy. They chose compassion. They chose to have a war. Some white people against other white people, those with a soul and those without. Those with a soul won. That's what happened. So when I see people like, demanding reparations like if you if you really want to demand reparations demand it from the people who wronged you to begin with and that that was everyone white black green purple everyone at some point at some point everyone has had ancestors that has been a slave and everyone has had ancestors that own slaves everyone we all come from sinners. And that includes you. Humanity wronged you. Humanity is who you should demand reparations from. And that includes the person when you look in the mirror.
You're a part of this too. You're a human too. You're just like the rest of us. You're not immune to the to the temptations of of power and influence and and the sins and greed and 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 pride and lust and envy and all that stuff. Straight up there you can take any path. I started with the path of income inequality is wrong. But any path you can take and eventually you will extrapolate out the truth of the matter and that is that we are all humans. We are all in the same boat together. If one of us suffers, the rest of us suffers too. And if one of us thrives, the rest of us thrive as well. So when I see someone like Kamala Harris take something like an absolute joke of, of the issue of her skin color and try to demand that people take it seriously, try to demand that people call a descendant of a slave owner a victim. When I see that stuff, it's like, there's no doubt in my mind, if you vote for her, you've been duped, you've been fooled, you've been bamboozled, you've been hoodwinked, you've been led astray, run amok, um, oh, what are the other ones? I can't remember. But you've been fooled by these people who want to further break things down and create these illusions of separation. There are, no, there are no separations. We are all human. There is no separation. It's an illusion. You've been fooled. Don't be fooled. And see, I get like uppity too. I get angry too. I, I, I'm not perfect. I'm not always at peace. You know, sometimes I get a little mad. Dog, I, I spent money on that hat. The, the day I took it there, I had not worn that hat in public before that. The day I take it there, it's gone. So sometimes I can get a little... That's the reason why I wore the hat to begin with. As a middle finger to all the people that are stupid enough to fall for, for these honestly like blatantly foolish things. You know, I was talking to this girl actually. This is what still holds my faith in humanity. People are not stupid. Everyone, people, reasonable minds are out there. They just say nothing. They're just too scared. I was talking to this girl and I was like saying like very controversial things but things that are right. And that if you get somebody in private when they're not afraid to get be canceled, pretty much everyone will admit that these things are correct. But because everyone's so worried about can being canceled, they're not gonna admit it publicly. And I was like, I was like, you know, I'm right. You know, I'm right. And then I said, like, like don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. And I said, I said, I'm not afraid. The whole time she's telling me I'm wrong. But then she changes her tune to adjust to what I'm saying, and she goes, you should be. You should be afraid. So it's not that people disagree. People agree, they're just afraid to say the truth. And the truth is, your choice to interpret the hat as a bad thing is you is a you problem. Make America great again, why the hell would you not want to, make every place great again. Make every place greater, like what's the harmful message in that? Why would you not want a place to be great? Why would you want to wish the downfall on a place? And I get like people might have some idea of like, oh, what does Donald Trump really mean by make America great again? Does he mean put white people on top and, and oppress everybody else? But then it's not great. Why are you arguing about whether or not it should be great? Why not argue about what greatness actually is then? Then we can have a productive conversation. But those are deep conversations. Those, are, those go past small talk. But it just, it, it honestly makes no sense to me. Like how could wanting any, any place to be great or greater, aspiring for it to be, to, to achieve its future great potential. How could that be bad for any place? Make the whole damn world great again. Make YouTube great again. And then the cycle continues because then I think to myself like, wow, y'all are some idiots. Like how foolish to be so offended at a hat. And that makes me want to wear it even more. That makes me want to fight back even more and go like, nah, you're wrong. I'm not particularly a fan of Donald Trump. I think he's excessive in the way he lives. He could have done a lot of legendary things that he didn't do. I don't think he's particularly great at talking. I think he's very prideful. I think he surrounds himself with a lot of yes men, but um, at least he still seems human to me, you know? At least he doesn't seem like a, like a psycho person that'll like drone strike anyone they disagree with, you know? Which is what his competitors seem like. Just inauthentic, just willing to control people by fear rather than by the truth. Straight up, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you like it is. I see more humanity in Donald Trump because I see myself. I see myself, I'm like, I wanna wear the hat. You know why? Because we do a little trolling. It's called we do a little trolling. When has any of these other people even said the word trolling? They try to say things that like real people say that are not NPC things. They try to like be in tune with like 
pop culture, Pokemon go to the polls. I'm not gonna vote. I think it's a waste of time. I honestly don't think the votes count. I think whoever's gonna win is, I think it's already decided. But if I was ever to vote, gun to my head, I would vote for Donald Trump. Actually, I would put on the Harambe or like D's Nuts or something like that if there's like a thing. But if it was just between the two candidates, why can't we have both? You have two parents, atomic family household. It works better with two parents, one masculine, and one feminine coming to a compromise. That's like exactly what's happening here. Why not have both? Imagine how entertaining that would be. Every decision has to be agreed upon by both Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Like just do anything other than what's going on right now, other than just conforming to this stupid system. Uh, Donald Trump just seems like a pretty selfish, but like human guy. And he also seems like he doesn't like the system. I don't like the system. I think most people don't like the system. And he seems like he wants to tear it down. Nothing that would imply anything that would break community guidelines, but I kind of agree. I do think the system needs to be torn down. But either way, I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference whoever ends up being president. Donald Trump, when he was president, did like the most liberal thing you could do, printing all that money, giving all those stimulus checks, you know? I think no matter who's president, they'll cave into whatever social pressures there are. And people changing their behavior based on whoever's president, I feel are just stupid, so. Trump 2024, I guess. MAGA all the way. Maybe I'll get another hat one day.